Hello and welcome back to Joe's Math Tools. In our session today, we are solving an algebraic equation when fractions are involved. And if you're ready, let's get started. Today we're solving an algebraic equation involving fractions. Now whenever solving algebraic equations involving fractions, remember the first thing you need to do is the same thing we would do if we were working out regular fractions and they had unlike denominators. So our first step needs to be to find our LCD. And remember whenever finding your LCD, it's the same thing as finding the LCM. Remember that the D just means that we're working with numbers in the denominator, but overall, we're still finding the lowest common multiple of the numbers in our denominator, which is 3, 2, and 4. And even though we know that 5 has a denominator of 1, oftentimes we don't really worry about the 1 because we know that whatever number we use, we will still have to be multiplying the 1 times that number. So the LCD of our numbers 3, 2, and 4 is going to be 12. So now that we have our LCD, that means that we now need to change our fraction into their equivalent form where every one of these terms has a denominator of 12. Now in multiplying or working out our equivalent form, I'm going to do that on the side for this question so that if this is your first time working out these type of questions, you'll be able to follow me and understand how I am actually changing my fractions to their respective equivalent form. So I'm going to start with the first part, which is my 2K plus 1 all over 3. And remember, I'm changing this to its equivalent form where 12 is the denominator. Now, when changing this fraction to its equivalent form where 12 is the denominator, I'm looking at my number 3 and looking for the number that when I multiply it to 3, it's going to equal to 12. And that number is going to be 4. So 4 times 3 is equal to 12. And remember, whenever changing to your equivalent form, that means whatever I multiply my denominator by, my numerator is also multiplied by the same number. So I'm going to be multiplying 4 times 2K, which will equal to 8K, and 4 times 1, which will equal to 4. So for my first term, I have 8K, plus 1. And now we're going to begin working on our second term which is k halves. And for my k halves, what I'm going to do for this step is also include the, the minus sign or the negative sign that's in front of my k. Because whenever I'm doing my distribution, that negative or that minus sign is going to be distributed to everything that's in that term following it. So I'm just going to include my negative or my minus sign in this step so that as I do my equivalent form, I will also distribute that along with my multiplication. And again, we're finding our equivalent form where 12 is our denominator. So I'm looking for the number that when multiplied to 2 is equal to 12. And we know that 2 times 6 is equal to 12, which means that I'm going to be multiplying my k times my 6 and I will also distribute this minus or the negative sign along with the 6 as I multiply. So negative 6 times k will equal to negative 6k. So our second term is going to be negative 6k. Now let's look at our next term which is our 5. And we know that with every whole number it has a denominator of 1. So again, we're also converting this number to its equivalent form. So we know that 1 times 12 will equal to 12. So 12 times 5 will equal to 60. So this will equal to our 60. And now to change my last term, and just like I did with the k, I will also include the negative or the minus sign along with this term. That's so that when I apply my distribution, I'm also going to do the distribution of the negative or the minus sign along with it. So we know what number times 4 is going to give us 12. And we know that 4 times 3 is equal to 12. So that means now I'm multiplying everything in my numerator times. Again, I'm going to use the minus 3. 
So minus 3 times 3k will equal to negative 9k and negative 3 times 4 will equal to negative 12 and I'm going to return that those terms as well back to my numerator and now that every term has a denominator of 12 we're going to perform our last step which is to eliminate our denominator and just focus on our numerator and as I move these terms off my fraction or off of my 12 I will also begin collecting my like terms together on each side of my equal sign so that I can next begin to simplify my expressions. Okay, so 8k minus k, 6k will equal to 2k plus 1 equal to 60 minus 12 will equal to 48 minus 9k. And now we're going to be collecting our like terms over our equal sign. And for me, if you've watched my videos before, you know that I try my best to avoid working with negative signs. It doesn't mean that I can't, but as much as you can simplify to keep it as simple as possible, try to do that. So if you're not good with negative, look at your equation, see which term would be best to move when collecting your like terms. So for example, I am going to start my 2Ks and since I have 2K positive here and my 9K is negative, I'm going to move that 9K and if it's negative here or minus here, then I will add it on the opposite side. That's so I would have to avoid having to deal with moving and then having two negatives to work with. So I have my 2K plus 9K would equal to 11K plus 1 equal to 48. And now I'm going to collect my constants and since my 1 is being added, that means on the right hand side I will subtract that 1 and put back my 11k. So 48 minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to have to pause a minute because I just checked my working and I realized that I made an error. So pardon me, I'm going to just do a little bit of erasing and correcting at the moment. And I must admit with you that whenever you are working out these equations, be very careful when you are transferring your terms back into your equation because as you can see, I made a big boo-boo here. I put the 1 back instead of the 4. Even though I worked it out and got the 4, I still put the 1 back. So just be careful as you work through. Don't take your time and double check it working. That's not a problem. If you make a mistake, just make sure that you correct it. That's why for me, I find it so important that after you solve these equations to always go back and check your answers. And you notice that with my algebraic equations, I always perform a check afterwards because I realize that that step is very, very important whenever you are working out these type of equations. So now we're doing our one step equation where multiplication is involved. I mean, uh, whenever we're multiplying 11 K 11 times K, we're going to divide the 11 on both sides to get my variable K by itself. And then 44 divided by 11 is four and 11 divided by 11 is one. So my K is equal to four. Okay. So most important part, let's perform our check. So we said that K is equal to four. So that means we're going back and everywhere in this equation that k appears and now swapping out that k for my number 4. So the first step is to apply your substitution. Always show your substitution. Don't be so quick to just dive right in and start working out. Do your substitution first. Simplify your questions or each of your terms individually as much as you can and then begin collecting your like terms or finding your LCD if need be. So 2 times 4 is 8 and 8 plus 1 will equal to 9 thirds. Subtracting 4 halves equal to our 5 and 3 times 4 is equal to 12 and 12 plus 4 is 16 fourths. And now what I'm going to do here since I noticed that there is a lot of common multiples in our numerators and denominators. I'm going to simplify my fraction and see where we go from here. 
So three divides into itself once, three divides into three, three into nine three times, two divides into itself once, two divides into four twice. Putting back our five, and four will divide into itself once, four can divide into 16 four times, which will equal to plus four. Sorry, again, another mistake. Seems like I'm rocking them up a lot on this question. So was, this one was a sign error. So you notice that. Just be careful with these little mistakes as you work through. Trust me, I know. I, I worked on another question before, and when I got to the end and I was checking the answer, after the answer worked out incorrectly, I went back to check my working. And then in my working, I realized I made a very simple error. It was a sign error at the beginning of the question. And that completely threw my answer and everything else off. So please check your working, check your answers. If you make a mistake or you notice that you have an error somewhere, just go back. Take your time and double check everything. These mistakes do happen. It is common. And sometimes it's always the simplest mistakes sometimes that throw us off. And as you can see, I made two in this video. One was in calculating my LCD, converting my equivalent fraction, and then still didn't transfer my entire equivalent fraction over into our working. And then in this one was a sign error. So just be careful of those little things. So if you work out your question and something is off or the answer is wrong, just go back and check. So now that we know that both sides of our equations are equal to the same thing, that means that my answer k equals 4 is the correct answer for our equation. Okay, so I hope this helped you out. I hope this also keep you motivated and not get deterred by your little mistakes. Notice I made some myself, but we corrected them, continue working on our question, and still arrive at the correct answer. So remember that practice does make it perfect and you will get better with practice. So don't be discouraged. Just keep working and keep improving your skills. And until next time, this is Joe's Math Tools, where math is made easy.